All right. Hey, Adrian. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, what's nine inches long and dang dangles in front of a cunt? Wouldn't it be my dick? But continue. Yeah. <laughs> Neil Hamilton's tie. Who? Oh, so <laughs> Alex Hamilton. <laughs> Alex Hamilton. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's just start the pod. G'day. This is the Two Beards Wrexham podcast. Your go-to for all things Wrexham AFC. Join us as we chat about the highs and lows of our favourite footy club. She'll be right now. G'day, beard brethren, sheilers, fuckheads, and just all around legends. Welcome to a, another week of Two Beards Wrexham podcast. That's right. I'm your host, Rousey. That sexy motherfucker over there is Adrian, uh, bringing you another week of Wrexham goodness. <laughs> and boy, do I mean goodness. Is that right, Adrian? Fucking goodness. My goodness. Uh, that was an epic weekend of of epic proportions. We had a, we had low expectations. So I feel like when it smashed it, um, we all, all in unison um, cheering from every part of the globe, the big global reds that we are now. Um, just, it was not, it wasn't it nice to be on X after a win? Because when you oh, lose, yeah. you just see the visceral and the disgusting <laughs> tweets. And all I saw was that amazing play from Paul Mullen from the back half of oh. our own defensive box to get it out, get the ball himself, feed it to the man, the myth, <laughs> the legend, Andy Cannon. Oof. Well, let's, let, let's, let's discuss all that in the next thing. I know we're all excited. Oh, I just blew my load. Really it's, I'm sorry, bro. Oh, it's happened. I, I it's happened. Just- I could just strip off and run around naked and shout to the sky because we are looking brilliant right now, which is great. But uh, got to get some, got to get some uh, housekeeping out of the way, guys. You know what? We every single week we say this. We have a fuckhead program. It'll cost you five dollars a month and gives you access to our fans only Discord giveaways in the Discord, discount off our merch store and shout outs every single week on the podcast. So get on it, twobeardsmedia.com. Links will be in the description down below. And at that note, Adrian, who are our fuckheads? Give them a shout out, mate. Shit. I didn't brush up on the names. Usually I tend to like look at it at least just before we start. Um, But I'm going to go off the top of my head here. We're going to go with, we have Dan, we got Anthony, we've got Andy, we've got John, we've got Will, We've got Ryan, we've got Jake, we've got Chris, we've got Aaron. Sarah. We've got Sarah. And Ryan. We've got, I said Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> you always do that every week. You're like, and right, bro, if he's on your mind this much, we should just, just replace him with me. <laughs> um, put me out of my misery. No, and I think that I've counted everyone. Have I missed anyone that you can think of? I don't think I did. I think you got everything. Oh, else. Dubai Reds, Reese. Oh, and Dubai, yes. Yes, got to get Dubai, it. Right. And then our man, I always have to say full on Dubai Reds because, guys, if you don't know, this man in the literally in the desert <laughs> has <laughs> a Wrexham supporters group who legitimately, they catch up and they watch games at a bar. If you're ever in Dubai, hit that man up. The man's a legend. He was actually just recently in Australia, um, you know, on a little stopover. So very cool. Um, but yes, shout out to everyone who is in the Discord. We love a win and we love celebrating in that Discord after a win, don't we? After a couple of drinks, a couple Ooh, of puffs and a couple oh, yeah. of tugs. Oh, yes, that's right. So anyway, I know we're all excited. So fucking this, get into it. Right get into it, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Let's, boys. Let's, Let's review <laughs> none other. Fuck it out, man. You just put me off now. <laughs> get it, boys. Yeah, get it. Get in there. Let's go. All oh, right. Okay. Let Let's review the weekend's game after this. Let's go. Woo. <laughs> Fucking Grimsby killed it. <laughs> Back you know in what? I'm, I'm actually sitting here thinking, fucking how you know, I called a loss on last week's podcast. Do I, I have it. to give myself numpty of the week? Because I did but, say technically, but, if it was a four-nil thumping, then I would give myself numpty of the week and I'll probably even write a rap about myself, but it was three one. Honestly, mate, this is how this is I don't make the rules. It's just 
the greater good. You have to call a loss again so that we can continue smashing opponents and playing out of our skin. Literally, that is, I don't make the rules, man. That's the law. You got to do it. So if you don't call a loss and you call a win or even a draw and we lose, the whole of the YouTube comment section will go after you. <laughs> I felt so dirty calling the loss, though. Like, but I was, I was, we were pretty down. I believed. I was like, mm, yeah, I think we're going to lose this one. What if I don't feel the same way and I'm still calling a loss for the sake of superstition? Is that really going to? Is that really going to? It stick? won't feel dirty. <laughs> no, it won't feel dirty because we know how you really feel. But the universe needs to be tricked into thinking that you believe it's a loss. But before we even get into that next game, let's talk about the one that we literally got to experience on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it was an experience, wasn't it? It was, we were all very low, including myself. I caught a draw, so I'm no better. Um, and they came out of the blocks like a cannon. Oh, uh, oh. oh, on fire. Fucking there it look is. at him go, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm stretching. I'm having a good time. I don't know, man. I tell you what, having a good win like that just fucking I tell brings you that what, energy. There, there, this, I mean, that was a good, solid professional performance. Professional we went, performance. And we really, really came out. We gave it to them. You know, oh, it was just, it was just gold to watch. And I was, I was over the moon after that win. Um, for those that are tuning in that don't watch or follow the English Football League and just follow the Welcome to Wrexham documentary, spoiler alert, we won 3-1. So, uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> spoilers. Um, Look, I'll be honest. If they got through the first part where we're just swearing like sailors, then good on them. Um, <laughs> But look, man, like you, you actually put it, nailed it on the head. It was a professional performance because what we have seen in the past, and we mentioned it in last week's game, is we didn't come out. Uh, well, sorry, we came out with possession, but had nothing to show for it. And I feel like this was actually quite polar opposite. Um, I'm looking at the stats here: ball possession, look, sixty forty, pretty close, but actually was in favour of Grimsby. Um, expected goals uh, was 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.74 for Wrexham, um, only just beating that. And total shots, we actually only had three more shots than Grimsby. But if you watch that performance, we had so much more momentum. And I, we talked about how, you know, the color graph of like the momentum and seeing how it goes up and down. Look, ignoring those stats and how they look like they're only split by hairs, we actually dominated that. We felt like we were actually running out there and we actually had, well, our, I can tell you right now, out of the 13 shots we had, five only five were on target. But if you think about it, three of them were goals. So that is a huge uh, step up from previous weeks where we weren't showing any of that on target aggression um, at all. And yes, it could be a lot better. And yes, we want to be putting it on target every time. But if you're telling me we can kick three goals and have the Lion King himself. Yeah, he's got a brace roar. as well. I mean, well, that, that first goal, that first goal is just a piece of magic. Like it was just to see, to see it's, it, it, it obviously started from, down in um, Grimsby's box, and we we defended uh, an, a, a cross coming in, and Elliot Lee started it off, knocked it off to Paul Mullen. Paul Mullen yep. juggled it around two defenders and then a third coming on to him. You see Elliot Lee and Tom O'Connor just blasting off, and then none other than the Lion Man himself, Andy Cannon, just blasting down. Like, I've never seen anyone run that, that quick. Like he was, he was on a mission and he was charging right down the corridor straight into, into the opponent's box. And then Paul Mullen passed it off to Tom O'Connor. Tom O'Connor then slotted it right in front of Andy Cannon and Andy Cannon put one right in the back of the net. And it was just magical. Just magical. <laughs> it was so good, man. It was so good. But that actually was the second goal 
That was um, the second goal, yeah. Yeah, I was just double checking that. That's why I was seeing me scrolling and looking down. Um, because I'm like, I remember it being the second goal. Um, but who cares? Doesn't matter what order it is in, it, it it's the fact that it happened. And that second goal for me, yeah, was the highlight. If you've watched it, someone said, you know, goal of the season, and you can't say no to that because a lot of people go, you know, oh, is it gotta be a, a worldie from halfway? Is it gotta be this? This was a team goal, if I ever saw one. And the fact that you've got Paul Mullen doing Paul Mullen things. Like you said, started off with Elliot Lee, but Paul Mullen being able to make the run that he did, feed the ball as well placed as he did in front of Cannon. Um, And obviously we make the joke, Cannon firing, you know, it just goes bang. And I've been remiss and we've talked about it in previous weeks. I think a lot of people, including myself, wrote off Andy Cannon, especially, you know, early doors when, you know, he's getting cards galore, just, really being a bit reckless. And I think it took that time on off off to the side to realize, oh shit, I could be a big part of this squad. And have you noticed how much the club embraces him from not just like the coaching staff, but the players as well. You see Mm. McLean posting on Twitter about him, uh, sorry, on Instagram about him. You see Stephen Fletcher doing the same. You see Humphrey Kerr, you know, uh, doing it as well. Like the, the love for him is immense. And, you know, it's all started off with a bit of a laugh about him, you know, because of his lion story. But as much as we make that the joke, his football is now making its own story. And I think for me, he's getting close to, if not being player of the season in my eyes, but it's so, it's so contrast to what he's been putting out in that first half of the season. Who did, when you look at that, do you see someone who is going to be climbing the leagues with us? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think he's going to be uh, a key part. Um, I mean, I did say last week, look, it's going to be impossible to predict what we're going to do in League One until it's it comes around. But keeping guys like Andy Cannon, keeping guys like Paul Mullen, Elliot Lee, possibly James McLean, like all these people that you'd want to keep because you know they've got the quality and you know that they can do a job. Yes, it's going to be tougher. It's League One. It's a it's a step up, but you want to keep that quality. And and you know, uh, you look at sides like Luton, for example, um, and Co- even Coventry. When uh, um, we was talking about them last week, they stick with what they've got because that creates that team atmosphere, that camaraderie within um, within the change room, and they want to keep that going and just make tiny little changes here here and there that improve the squad. Yes, they will probably going to lose a lot of players in the transfer window. We'll probably sell a few. We'll get some more in. We'll bolster her, our squad, but the core group will probably stay the same right through. Luton did it. Um, Coventry yeah, yeah. obviously did it. Leicester, Leicester, Leicester as well as another it. example. You know, I know that when they got relegated, it was a big deal and they lost a lot of big names, but they kept, like you said, kept that core group uh, together because they knew they'd be back up. But in saying that, that's a whole other story. If you ever want to check out um, some drama, check out the championship right now because it was supposed to be said and done about 12 weeks ago. Leicester were like something like 20 odd points clear or some shit. And now they're uh, they're fighting for for survival with those top three. So have a look at it. I'm not going to go on about it any further. But <laughs> what I think is true is is exactly what you're saying. You know, we don't know what we're going to have until till next season. You could even say, as much as you, a lot of people said, you know, that's a lot of wholesale wholesale changes from last year. You still have those players in the locker room, if that makes sense. You still got your toeses on the bench, your Luke Youngs. Aaron Hayden to an extent when he's not injured. Um, you know, you've got people like that, Tunnicliffe, Clareworth, people who have been around the club during those the the National League days as well. Obviously, we include the big names like Paul Mullen, Ollie Palmer, Elliot Lee. But that that's the kind of changes we're looking at, keeping those factors. And if we do need to start pushing people to the bench because we have better players, then you know, good on us. Um, we saw it with with Bolton starting. Um you know, obviously he got an opportunity because Barnett's injured, but, you know, that could be something we see as well. You might find Bolton um, adapts better towards this end of the season because he's a bit fresher. Bolton did Barnett. really well. Bolton yeah. did really, really well. I think 
it's hard to sort of pick if there's any players that are, you know, that didn't put in a good performance on the weekend. It was a solid team effort. All those goals were team effort. Now, I mean, obviously we got Andy Cannon's two goals with his brace, which is great for him to see, but just want to just take a moment just to reflect on Paul Mullins' goal as well. <laughs> oh, I think he's been taking some lessons from McLean because he gave gave the um the home crowd some stick when he scored it too. But that was, I mean, that was bicycle kickish esque. Yeah, <laughs> if that's a half word, volley like, or volley, it was a half volley <laughs> out. You know, out of um out of the air, it was bouncing around a bit in the, in the box and obviously came off like Mendy took a big, went to go for a big strike and it took a deflection, but went up in the air and just fell in the right direction. And Paul Mullins instinct to take that shot, just pop it out of the air and straight into the back of the net is just, I mean, that's a striker's goal. That is, that's a proper striker's goal. And it was fucking magical. It made me rock hard. <laughs> Lugin on the curtains. <laughs> I mean, you just love to hear it. You just love to hear it. Um, but it, you've actually brought up a very good point and something that I actually want to segue into. Um, I know you just mentioned him very briefly in Mendy um, being, you know, he's quite Mr. Consistent at the moment, which has been helpful considering, you know, he was quite inconsistent towards the start of that se- the, the our season. I do want to actually bring something that I'm going to bring into the, the foray, and I haven't told you about it, but I'm going to be bringing my own little segment. And my segment is actually going to be the unsung hero. So I'm just going to kind of pick a player who maybe wasn't in the forefront of the media, but who played their part and kind of read out some stats because, you know, I love that shit. So that's kind of where I'm going to lead into this. So I do want to go through uh, just something here that maybe you didn't see. Um, but I think was was pretty pretty uh, amazing. So obviously total shots we talked about. Mullen had a great day. He had topped it with four cannon with two in terms of shots on goal. Expected assists is something that's very different to assists in general. That's actually just saying, hey, um, we expect this play in the way that they're they're moving the ball and the way they're doing it they're going to be able to feed the ball to the right person. They're going to score, right? Now, let's just ignore the first two fucking people at Grimsby Blades. <laughs> but I did want to mention my first unsung hero of the week would be uh, mate, Mr. Ewan O'Connell. Sorry, what did I say? Owen. O'Connell and Owen O'Connell and Thomas O'Connor. Sorry fucking mouthful those two there actually got the exact same expected um assists which was uh one <laughs> but in it's an average it works itself out it's actually quite good what did you make of o'connor's game because i know we all talked about andy can and we talked about you know people like you know the people who are in the front elliot lee andy cannon what about the guys who were a little bit further back um o'connell and o'connor well I mean, that back line very rarely needs changing now, right? Yeah. Um, I feel kind of bad for Toza because, at the you know, he's not getting back into that. That back three is solid, like fucking solid. And, you know, Owen O'Connell's been center, center back for, you know, the best part of a few weeks now. Toza wasn't, was, to, Toza wasn't even on the bench on the weekend. I don't I mean, think so. Let me just double check. I think, actually, I think he might have been. Yes. He was on the bench. He, yeah, he was on the bench. Yeah, he was. Okay. So, you know, but he didn't come on. No. Neither did Dolby. No. Um, but do you know who did come on? Scottish Viking Jesus and Jack. Yeah. No, no. I'm talking about the other, the other Scottish. The other Scottish. McFadzine. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. But yes. look, look, I do want to, I will move on to Fads in a moment. And um, yeah, look, but for me, my unsung hero was, it was actually both O'Connor and O'Connell. O'Connor has kind of been the guy, the, char- the character, the player that has been touted as if we have him in the team and we bring him back and he's fully fit, we will, we will run amok and we'll win this fucking league. 
But O'Connell for me is is kind of he he has some games where we go shit like like think about back all the way back to fucking match day one against MK Dons he cost us two goals basically um, and and for, uh, and from pure mistakes he's picked up on that he's worked on it and he's worked his way back into being you know I'd like to say a bit of a mainstay but obviously you've got uh, a pretty big bolstered backline now with Boyle. And Clareworth, who I like to think are probably permanent fixtures, but having O'Connell up in that centre back position, do you think this gives him uh, priority over Toza? When we talked about last week, we talked about how we had people like Tunnicliffe, Clareworth, things like that, younger. O'Connell's probably on the older end end of things, but he's in form. Do you think that he he kind of sees out the contract and, and stays with us next season? Or do you think we we continue with the youth and bring in um, even bigger names? I think he probably does stay with us next season. Um, you know, it's, re- it's going to be really, really hard to say what is going to happen. We know, obviously, who's cemented and who's not. Um, when I last week we went through a list, so shout out to last week's podcast. If you haven't watched <laughs> it, go watch it. Um, yeah, shout out, shout but, out to last week's pod. But that said, I mean, your unsung hero there is pretty damn spot on. I mean, he does a pretty solid job in that central back role. So does Tom O'Connor. It was good to see him back, and it was good to see Fads back in as well. I mean, he always had a soft spot for his brother when he was brother was playing at uh, Coventry. Um, Carl McFads in and you know, look, he Fads I felt like he's probably been a bit hard done by because he's never really, you know, I mean, yes, he got the the red that last season that which you know at a really inopportune time, but it wasn't really a red though, I, was it? I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like he, you know, he's probably been maybe a little bit hard done by him, not had as much luck, overlooked a little bit. He did a good job on the weekend. He did his job and he deserved his spot on the 22 register. Um, I think he's earned, well, Mullen earned that. And now with, you know, uh, Mendy possibly off injured, it's going to open up obviously more for, for McLean to come back in. Um, and Fads will probably feature in a few games, but Fads has always been more defensive. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he came on, uh, he came on at the yeah, that obviously that 49 minute mark, and and obviously when Mendy came off, um, to to fill that void, I do not see him starting, um, uh, that's for sure, no, especially if we've got no. McLean. Gosh, um, no. because this- but in saying that, it, it does seem like Parky likes having. Um, McLean in the middle, so possibly O'Connor goes back to the bench. And yeah, but you got Evans still to come back, and it's like, like this is just ridiculous. Like, how on earth do you pick this shit? Like, it's <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you something why. This means the Parky has to finally change fucking five at the back because look at the, look. I love I love love what we put out on the weekend. But look look if you look at our midfield right now, you got Lee O'Connor Cannon. O'Connor gave an assist. Cannon gave two goals. Lee put in a freaking good effort. You got Mendy who got injured, right? <laughs> you got Boyle who was good, did his job. O'Connell, my unsung hero of the week. Claire Worth was okay, probably a bit quiet. Bolton did his job. Oconquo could have done a little bit better with that goal, but who knows? We'll, go, we'll get into that in a minute. But that has a lot of room for movement. You know what I mean? Like that back half has a lot of room for movement. So my point is you could take out, hypothetically, take out Boyle, maybe a Clareworth off the, on, and maybe pop him on the bench and then move fucking someone in the midfield like a George Evans or a McLean and then have two, two proper, proper uh, wingers down the midfield. That, that could be, I that could be something as well. The only way, see, I heard Parky say in an interview that he just likes to take some, like he moved close to, he moved to the Wrexham area. So it allows him more time to focus on football and let the decisions come to him. And sometimes you have to let the decisions come to him. So I just, I take that as Parky's out the back, puffing the magic dragon, trying to think up of ideas. 
Yeah, because honestly, man, <laughs> it's like because yeah, if Evans. that was me and I was sitting there with that lineup, and I'll be like, "Well, fuck me, what do I do? You know what? Fucking crack out the bong, get the old water pipe, bloody smoking up, yeah. and just then let the ideas come to you because that's when most of these good ideas come to me. So you know, party, <laughs> you need maybe the same thing. Yeah, you know, puff the but magic the midfield- track. Half the magic dragon, mate. But like the midfield is such a good point that everyone is so fucking good. Did you see the reserves match not from last week? Yeah. That was the most stacked fucking reserve side I've ever seen. You had like people like McLean. You got I just and naming just one wasn't, player. Wasn't old Salford fucking salty. Salty salty. Oh. Salty, salty, salford. But <laughs> but but that's my point is we have such a stacked midfield to the point where if we're not changing the formation, if you get injured, you're missing out. Now, there is a flow-on effect to that. Mendy, obviously, like we said, Mendy's injured. McLean's traditional point of entry uh, is is that is that left-back position. So you would put him there, right? Mm. You just, all right, fuck it. Let's just chuck him there. And then you go, well, that solves that. Well, no, Evans comes back. And who are you going to take out? O'Connor, who's just got an assist? Elliot Lee or Cannon? Fuck off! You're not doing any of that. <laughs> like so, yeah. so you you are literally stuck. So I worry for the midfielders if anyone gets injured because they might not see the game again, like a game again for the end of the season. Because Mendy, for example, let's just say McLean does come in exactly where he went. Possibly Mendy does come back, but then Fads is back into reserves. Do you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden Fads is back into the to the the bleachers and we don't see him ever again. Like there is unfortunate stories to come from having such an improved, incredible midfield. And left and right backs are pretty good too. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're yep. pretty stacked, our forward line, everything. But last thing I want to bring up on this game, if that's okay with you, no, we no, can, fuck, no, no, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Don't talk about the, don't talk about the, the conceded goal. <laughs> go on, um, go on. Talk about the I wanna, goal. I just want to talk about it for a second. There was a, the only discourse I saw on X was just who's to blame for the goal. Was it just, we got, we got ahead of ourselves. We're doing pretty damn good and kind of let that one through. Was it a conquo? Was it our defense? Was it? O'Connell, well, it was, was a it? near post goal again. That's the second near post goal that has gone in. And it seemed yeah. to me that is more indicative of a weakness that a conqueror might have not protecting his near side. Mm. Um, I think you're right. I think it's something we have seen and it's kind of been exposed. And we can't, we can't blame it on him either, by the way. Like he's still being stellar. It's just when you look at finally our defensive worry seem touch on fucking all the wood um that it seems to have gone touch away like wood. we're actually yeah i'll touch your wood um <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell um no like the legitimate defense is it seems to be back it's back to what we're used to and okay great so when mistakes like that happen it's like okay well maybe it is the goalkeeper i'm not saying we make a fucking drastic change or anything but yeah okay i, I agreed i did think it was it was something that maybe he just needs to work on a little bit just kind of seeing where that is it is also to do with the positioning of a young young clareworth or a big eared boil um you know these are the, the players that also need to help him as well so an a, amalgamation of the two but yeah i think a conquer could have done better and i think he will next week he learns from his mistakes yeah yeah exactly exactly so you know what let us move on because I do want, before we go to Mansfield and, and talk about the Mansfield game, I want to talk about the women because something oh, happened. Yeah. Something Big happened. Game. They played at the race course in front Huge of 2,000 game. plus fans. An okay turnout, but come on, guys, it could be better. Jesus. <laughs> but, okay, so. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to do it? <laughs> go, no, okay, yeah, go on. Because I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking about that goal from Lily in, in my from Lily Jones. Oh, Lily Jones, mate. Belter. What the fuck? <laughs> someone, someone put it very poignantly. Imagine the feeling you just kicked a worldie in the net of the stand. That you sat that in with your dad week in, worldy. week out. That was more than a worldie. That was like out of this worldie. Incredible. <laughs> it it, it, it and incredible. the feeling 
the feeling she must have had just knowing that as well. Like I, someone posted it and I was, I was tearing up. I was like, that has to be one of the most full circle moments of anyone's career I've seen mm. to date. Um, because there are people who relive their childhood, you know, things, but with women's football, unfortunately, a lot of that doesn't come to fruition. You know, some teams don't like Wrexham don't play week in, week out at the race course. They play, um, you know, elsewhere, um, fucking the, the, what is it? The rock. Um, mm. but like we, we don't get to experience that. So the fact that she got to do it on that day, look, we can go into the result in the moment, but that moment, bottle it up, give it to me for the rest of my life. I'll take that any day because that is dreams come true kind of shit. And that, oh. I don't know, man, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I'm just, that goal, like, it's just, that I, was, I remember watching it happen. I was just like, that is just fucking cooked. Like, how the hell do you score that? Um, I mean, that's like almost Beckham-esque. I mean, I know Beckham scored from halfway, but um, I mean, that was off a of But he did, did he ever do it at the race course? That no. was off a, of, nah. Can he do it at the race course on a cold Can Tuesday he do, night? <laughs> exactly. Can he do it on a cold Tuesday night and fucking wear Exum? Uh, but, but. It was off a one touch off Rosie Hughes and she obviously saw, um, saw Lily coming through and just one touch, just perfectly over the keeper's head. Like you just, wow. Uh, Legend of the week. My legend of the week is to Lily Jones. You fucking earned it, Lily. Agreed, bro. You fucking earned that one. Honestly, you said it last week with me when we talked about giving uh, Ryan Legend of the Week. Shout out to Ryan again. He's going to get every shout out every week, it looks like. Um, but <laughs> the the he's big one boy. for me is who's a boy. He's, he's a our boy. boy. Or he's a boy. Because <laughs> 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 um, I think we know that. But anyways, uh, look, Lily... I've never agreed with you more on something than, than her being Legend of the Week. But also just, yeah, dude, like... We we have been remiss of us. We haven't because of the up and down roller coaster that has been the men's side. We have dropped the ball a bit in in covering a lot of the women's content um, of late. We know there are a lot of um, pods who are, who are doing it uh, a lot of justice. So shout out to them. Um, it's not because we don't want to. It's just that we because of the times difference as well that's a big Sometimes one we don't actually get to watch those games at all which is and we don't want to lie to you hard. we don't ever want to make it up and read it out <laughs> and then say yeah we did that we but watched, I that. watched that game yes and i just gotta say that was a very very close game with swansea um it was very backwards and forwards it could have gone either way um i mean geez i tell you what amber lightfoot as well oh she is yeah, light but- on her feet Dude, they are like she is nah, right on her feet. Oh, I heard you, buddy. I I heard you. I just trying not to put my head through the fucking monitor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but no, honestly, it it is a uh, like yeah. Point is, when we watch the women's games, when we can, we will definitely be covering it. We will definitely do our best to endeavor to do so. I think the hardest thing for me is they usually kick off at 3.30 a.m. on a Sunday for me. So, And for you, you, good on you for getting up last night because that's a late one for you as well, something like one in the morning for you. So, I mean, it was a um, bit of a soft penalty to Swansea, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it could have easily yeah. just been a two-all two, two all game. But, um, you know, the girls went out and they did us proud. They really did put up a fight. Um, and, yeah, all, all more power to the good girls. On them, what and Gemma you know is doing with that squad and Steve Dale is just mm, keep Gemma, it going. Gemma Owen could easily, for me, be like if we go by coaching staff standards for both men and the women's team. Just she's just had a what she's had on the, an influence on this side is is massive, mate. So oh, um, the bit the biggest thing for me though as well, just to just to round off, um, is the rivalry is growing. Swansea and Wrexham, there was a bit of fire between between the women's teams. We need mm. that because when we are now, the women are in the highest possible division they can be for Welsh women's football. And th- that's the pinnacle. Swansea are the pinnacle. Cardiff are the pinnacle. We've had some real tough matches. We put it to them. It was too all. It was looking good. Heartbreak at the end. But let's be honest, that's improvement. That's also a bit of flair, a bit of spice in that game. Like there was actual, 
like, not, I wouldn't say fisticuffs, but I would just say there's a bit of menace in it. And I think for, for women's football, that's amazing because mm. for, for, and by women's, by women's football, I mean for our Rex, specifically our Rex and women's team, because to create an identity, to, to put it to these teams, they could easily do exactly what every other team that goes up does. And they could just go straight back down, but they haven't. They haven't even let up. And this is people on only semi-professional contracts. Most of them, some of them own, you know, aren't even on anything. They're still doing their day job. Just shout out to Del Morgan, Super Del Morgan in goal. These are the people that these guys are doing jobs and they're not in the most elite circumstances that the men are. And they're putting it to to higher division clubs in the in the men's team with better facilities, let's be honest and better um, growth. This is a small North Wales team, if you think about it, ignoring the Wrexham story for the women's team. It's a small team and they are fucking killing it. Best best performance of, of a team going up into a league that they should have hypothetically been floundering in, let's be honest, against those teams. Yes, you know, they've lost to these teams. But they haven't. They haven't stopped their spirit. They haven't stopped improving. And I'll tell you, next year, man, that's a fight because right now it looks like a bit out of our grasp to to take the title. But honestly, bro, next year, I'm telling you, next year we should year. be going to the Champions League. That's it. <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, after this, we are going to actually talk about the Mansfield game coming up Ooh. on Good Friday. Oh, and we might as well because we've got a game on the Monday too, so we might have to talk about that one because, uh, you know, we would normally record on a Monday night, but we will get Is it Halifax and Notts County? Oh, <laughs> like last year? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, fuck it. Let's go. After this, Mansfield game. Woo! So I know I just literally just said that we – got a game on fucking um, Friday and a game on Monday, but we don't. We've got a game on Friday and a game on Wrexham morning for us, so, or Tuesday night, uh, Wrexham time, um, which is obviously over the Easter long weekend. So we're just going to talk about Mansfield. Fuck Doncaster. We'll just probably review that on our next podcast. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway... Mansfield, Mansfield coming up this weekend. Now this is feels like a Notts County style showdown. Um, yep. Wow. Okay, this one's going to be interesting because we're going to have James McLean back, um, where he's going to slot in. We've obviously you know had bit bit of talks about that. Does he come straight back in? Do we stick with what we got? What What are your thoughts, Adrian? Oh, mate. Oh. I always feel like I ride off the high of the week before because I actually I'm pretty pleasantly confident that I don't think we'll lose. I think we're going to look at a draw or win here. Um, I'm pretty confident being at home, being in the form that we're in, being the form that Mansfield are in at the moment. Um, that is something I do want to read out just quickly. Um, some some stats between the two teams. So, uh, Wrexham is ranked fourth in goals per match, but Mansfield is actually ranked first in goals scored per match. Then you've got Wrexham haven't scored in two home matches. Well, we know what happened then, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Rank first away from this home, uh, away from home this season is Mansfield. So they are the number one traveling team is Mansfield, but they haven't kept a clean sheet in five matches. <laughs> so to round off that fucking jargon is the the big takeaway is this is the best away team versus us who before those two home goalless matches. But we still we still have the best home record, don't we? Ah, uh, second best. Second best now. Ah. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was gonna happen. I mean, if you fucking drop points to yeah. So fucking tran me. Anyways, um, th- that's a whole thing. But we had a big week, and yeah, look, I'll be honest. This is a close one. Best away team. They can score a lot, but they've also conceded in all their five matches. I'm calling a high scoring affair. 
And I don't know if we're going to go straight into the predictor, but I'm going straight in. I'm probably going to call Wrexham 2-1. Wrexham 2-1. I thought you just said it's probably going to be a high-scoring affair. 2-1 <laughs> is still high-scoring. <laughs> That's three goals. It's not uh, American football. is like 40 to 30. <laughs> okay. So I think we're in with a real good shot here. We have a good possibility to tie them in points. Um Mansfield are a very, very good side, but last time we went to their home ground, we ended up drawing against them, which could the be epic draw. Vital. Now they gotta to come to the race course and how they'll handle that sort of pressure. Um, they have obviously, you know, fallen victim to a few of mid to lower league um um sides, just like we have, because those yeah. mid to lower league sides are all fucked. Um <laughs> But, Sorry, that's really funny. Uh, yeah, well, they fucking are, aren't they? It's like, well, geez, yeah. like, if you can put a put away top sides like that, then why the fuck aren't you at the top of the table? It's just a fucking weird league, man. Um, anyway, weird, um, bad shit league. But that said, geez, you know what? As well, and last time I called a loss as well, and I have all the fuckheads saying, "I've got to call a loss again. We've got to keep the train going." I don't, on, re- I don't want to call a loss on this one. I really you do. Don't. Oh, you do it. Don't. I don't. I don't want to. I, I, I just. Look, I mean, look, I'm just saying, like, Re- Wrexham, like, don't get promoted. I'm fucking blaming you. <laughs> Wrexham lose 3-1. There we go. And now what's your, what's your, what else are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> going to leave my prediction of that, put it out there. <laughs> it, it's a fair prediction because they're the highest scoring team in league two. They're the best away team. We're the second best home team. They have conceded in five, uh, every match for the last five matches. So therefore that one goal makes sense. Honestly, man, I think that's a fair prediction regardless. And, you could be right because it is, we can't put it behind them. Mansfield is the team to beat as well as obviously Stockport and MK Dons. But let's be real. It's for us at the moment. It's just whoever's in front of us. And that is Mansfield right now. Well, he's, he is, he is like shaking. He's convulsing right now. He's like, Oh, I just said a loss. Ugh, like fucking, he's just yep. like convulsing. I'm done. seizing up. Fucking done. I don't want to call I mean, I, I was going to say 3-1 to Wrexham or 3-1 three, three, to Mansfield, but because I've got, I, we called a loss last time and we kicked ass away and we no, need that home form back. We need the fortress back. We, we've got to not feel so violated anymore. So 3-1 okay. to, to well, Mansfield. Well, I, let's we just assume your, let's assume either prediction you've just mentioned, but obviously the one you went with was the loss. So, you know, if you're listening football gods, do your thing. But who do you think scores that goal? Paul Mullen. Is it Andy Cannon? Paul Mullen. Paul Mullen. Mm. I'm I'm with my prediction being 2-1. You know what? I would love to see Palmer slot one away. Mm-hmm. I would love to he see is well slot one away. He is, he is well due. He is well due. He's been so good in terms of drawing those defenders. We talk about it week in, week out. Everyone talks about it. It's... Palmer starts, we win. No shit. But like, it is the way he draws those defenders off. And he's, it's basically selfless. selfless. He is being a team player and he's doing it well. Palmer but has to start. He has to start he and he will to. start. The and if he does. does not fucking lie, does it? No. Nah. It's proven it. It's proven Undefeated it. Undefeated with Palmer starting. Undefeated with Palmer starting. It's just, it's, that's it. That's, that's a it. stat. Parky. That's the stat. If you're puffing the magic dragon, I understand, but do not touch Palmer Mullen. Keep him in keep him in that starting squad. Jesus. I mean, oh, I just But he's due for one. He uh, is due for one. So he's a due for a big game. God, Elliot could you Lee's imagine due like for one as well? Yeah, I mean Elliot Lee's been just still like, you know, that meme where it's like, I'm doing my part. I didn't do fucking shit. No, like he he's doing his part, like at the moment, like Elliot Lee is doing what he needs to do. I was a bit hard on him at mid-season purely because he had done so fucking phenomenal at the start. He wasn't bringing that exact consistency. But now he's literally 
the the team player right now. He is playing his part. He's doing what he needs to do. You know, the typical words uh, of like every coach at the post conference, you know, you know, oh yeah, he's just playing, you know, he's doing it, playing his role for the team and, you know, doing his part and, you know, really helping get the three points. Um, so Elliot Lee's due for one. Ollie Palmer's due for one. I'm calling those two to be the goal scorers. Okay. Um, so that'll be for my two one prediction, and I'm calling own goal because I've talked up how good O'Connell's. <laughs> It'll be just an own goal because I've just fucking put my foot in it because it tends to happen with me as well. So when I say someone's on a stellar form, they get injured or have a shit one. So, <laughs> all right, well there we go. There's our predictions. Um, we'll we'll talk about the Doncaster game next week and um. Yeah, let's just go in to wrap this podcast up for the week where we'll just chat some shit. Let's chat some shit. After this, shit chat. Here we go. Woo! Well, that is it for another week. But we like to... I like to just chat some shit these days at the end of the podcast. And um, I got to say. We both ran out of steam though, mate. Look at us. Look at us both. We're both just like, it's been a long weekend. We won. We partied a bit hard. And now we're yeah. just bringing it down. Bringing it no, down. We to bring it down. Zones. We wrap it up. We should do it too. We should do it too. Beards ASM. Everyone just swerved off. They're listening it to their car. They just <laughs> swerved into the nearest tree, mate. Like, like legit, they were just like, "No, nah, I'm in, I'm done." Didn't even hear him. His mic's <laughs> cutting him out. His mic's cutting him out. Couldn't even hear. No, no, no. Right, he'll, he'll bump it in post or just insert. Comment down below. Do you want two beards ASMR episode? <laughs> a whole episode. Fuck me. A whole Maybe episode. A segment. Of- a whole a segment, episode of geez. just us whispering. All right, the energy bit, but like, but but it, like, there's different types of ASMR, isn't there? So there's like, obviously, like the whisper one where you just did, or there's the like the like the saucy kind of like hi, <laughs> like the people make the mouth noises and shit. I do it's not like, ever want to see you pull that face ever again. <laughs> like, get out! Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how are we? You You're tuning into the Two Beards Wrexham podcast, and uh, I have my boy Rousey here. What are you wearing? Um, <laughs> I'm done. I quit. That was that was my last word on the pod. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, that's so funny. Yes. <laughs> Get the whole ASMR going, you know, just talk a bit sexy. You know, might might just take the top off. The only beards is strong. see that. <laughs> comment down below if you want <laughs> if you want to if you click on the link tree below you'll see an only fan no um we just do you think do you think lacy underwear is actually comfortable or do you do is it just worn just to be sexy think about it i reckon it's comfortable i don't reckon it'd be that comfortable no nah, it's like it's like coarse right like it's like mm. a like it's like like a what do you call it stitched? You got to have those satin boxes, mate. Satin boxes, not the lacy underwear. The satin boxes. I don't know if there is there is there such thing as lacy men's underwear. And do you want to see Rousey wear it next week? <laughs> Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh fucking! This is going well off the rails. Um, but guys, we have a fuckheads program. If you want more of this. All the time, Mm-mm. five dollars a month in the description down below. <laughs> just gonna... come and join us, have a good time. Oh my god, he just posted a fresh nude. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's misadvertising. <laughs> like, we don't want to. We don't want to misadvise the shareholders. <laughs> no, no, we do not, because they help us keep this podcast running. But guys, um, let's just end it right there. I mean, this has just gone fucking weird. So we're just going to end it right there, guys. We love you. Beard brethren, Sheila's fuckheads, and just all around legends. This is another week of the Two Beards Rex and Podcast. Adrian, mate, see you next week. Up I'll the see town. You Bless the boys. Make some noise. Be good. Be rowdy. Fuck the world. Let's go. <laughs> Clap some see chicks. you next week. <laughs>
Woo!